let's say you're, I'm not saying you're skirting the uh, licensing, but you have your vans out there, you're taking care of a client, someone walks up go, hey, knock, knock, mm -hmm. can you take them that way, or? Yes, if, as long as we're working, we can do it. So if we meet someone, someone calls us and says, can you meet me at the parking lot in uh, Harris Teeter? While we're there, if someone were to come up, then yes, we can stay there. But otherwise, we need to move on. So if you're there and you had a way of announcing that you're there out on, on social media, you might just kind of note spots where you are and they can just come and meet up with you. Absolutely. As long as you're not deliberately sitting there with a sign, you know, barbershop is open. That is correct. That is correct. And, and we, uh, we've had a few people to offer to just get a scene and the, I'll, I'll meet you at, you know, the hospital or I'll meet you at, you know, a uh, shopping center at maybe Lansdowne Commons or, you know, various malls and things like that just to get the, um, to get, get the vehicle seen. You, it literally, this has been our best form of advertisement is the vehicle itself. It's a running billboard. So, um, but your but, suggestion about where we might be, we're, we're still new and building our, um, our client base, but we want to Put the city in pods say for example yeah. and have it on social media will be at this area and so um, maybe not specifically what location but the area of the beach that we would be in uh, Karen, what was the group that's doing the food trucks you presented about a year ago Lucy. Um, Lucy. there you may want to go back and look at a presentation we had a company what they were dealing with was uh, being able to set up for uh, these catering trucks and right. being able to broadcast that out so sound like a similar, you know, uh, you know, issue or something, but maybe look at Lucy. We've got it up on our website. Yes, ma'am. Couple of questions. Um, you mentioned setting up in like a shopping center parking lot. What if the landlord of that shopping center asks you to be there? Does that get around? Not saying you're trying to get around the um, city ordinance, but if like if I own a shopping center, I say, hey, you guys or my friends, can you just come here, hang out with me for a little bit? I think that would be fine. If we are invited. Okay. Again, and by by either a landlord, let's say, or even a client, okay. we can show up in a particular location. And the second question is, um, I think you guys would be really, really big in the wedding scene, um, big, especially for grooms, groomsmen. I don't know how many yes. chairs. Is it one chair, or two chairs? It's just me. I'm the only barber, so it's just one chair. Well, even so, you know, um, with with you know women, we pay a lot of money for wedding day hair, right. and I think that that like if if my husband to be because I'm actually getting married. There's 10 of them. I don't know how you would work that one out. Uh -huh. But um, if they could have something where you could come to them instead of trying to get all the guys, especially ones that are coming in from out of town, to a barbershop, I think that would be huge. And I think that would be, you would be so busy, you wouldn't even know to do it yourself. You're very correct. And I actually, I have someone I'm talking to about their wedding in June. And it's about the same size. It's not the 24th, is it? Uh, I don't have the <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Uh, it's... He, and he, he's talked to me about giving this as a gift to his groomsmen uh -huh. the day before. And um, one of the things in, that you'll see inside of the van, there, there is a, there's a beverage cooler. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to the um, ABC Commission to find out about offering a beer, mm -hmm. wine to clients, uh, complimentary. And they don't have a permit for me. Uh, they have them for airplanes and uh, trains, but they don't have one for my automobile. <laughs> so, because don't limos have booze in them? How's that work? How's that? What was that? Like when you like, yeah, you take a limo and there's always like booze. Yeah, that's. And I, I asked about that. However, this because this is a that the limousine is being purchased for a specific group at a specific time, um. and so at a specific location, so to speak. Um, that's why yeah. mine is different because um, I'm actually no. on the go. However, you know, if I do something like that, then I could provide, you know, like if a bunch of guys just got together, I could have some beer or what, whatever they wanted, you know. We learn not to ask questions. Because yes. sometimes if you <laughs> ask, you find out that they don't have something that covers you. And then you say, okay, well, thank you for your information and you roll on because we don't want anybody to make up a new rule. Right. And um, okay. we, we found that with the food trucks, we are not categorized like the food yeah. trucks. And so some of the ordinances and things that they have are different for us as of or, yet, or, or are missing for us. <laughs> yeah, as of yet, we really don't have a category because the, we are the only one. There are only maybe 10 in the entire country that are mobile barbershops. Some of them are have bad will travel. Um, and there are, there are a few mobile barbershops such as 
I have, none of them are set up quite as luxurious as, as mine. The closest one is in California. Uh, he's in the Hollywood, Beverly Hills area, charges $250 a haircut, you know, things like that. But I have literally no competition. So this is a brand new concept for anywhere near, near here and the surrounding states. Yes, sir. Uh, how much do you charge for a haircut and do you charge extra for like beards and what have you? I do, um, and I have some um, some little goodies that's going to give you all that information. It's $25 for a haircut, $10 for a beard trim, $35 for a straight razor shave, $27 for a head shave. Um, every haircut comes with uh, eyebrow trims, ear hair trims for the guys, you know, to get that. Trim a mustache for no charge, um, and then you get this hot lather straight razor shave around the ear and the neck and the shoulder massage. And do you, just a quick follow-up, do you, do you use... Um while you're sitting there, are you using your own power or do you use landline power or how does that work? I'm totally self-contained. Um, I have a propane generator that runs all of my electricity. And then there, I have a 37 gallon water tank that um, that I have, that I put my own water in. So the, that is actually also powered off of the generator. So and I have the power, I mean the water is kind of gray water as opposed to black water. And so we can dump it anywhere if it were you know, black water or sewage, that kind of thing would have to dispose of it in a different way. So how much was it again? It's $25 for a haircut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then again, $10 for beer trim, $35 for shave. And I, and I do have all of that information. I've got a package for everyone here that's got a, a stylus ink pen in it, and a price list, a business card, and some chocolate candy with my label on it, and things like that. So. doing the party, do you kind of group rates or something? Um, and that's, that is being discussed because I've not done one as of yet, so it would depend on the size of the party. One, one discount we do have in place that we're making use of already, if, if I go to a home and there's at least th um, three haircuts at one stop, then there's a discount. If there's four, there's a bigger discount, and five, again, a bigger discount. Mm -hmm. Can you cut all ethnicities of hair? I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Donna's comment is, if it's hair, I can cut it. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that is my comment, yeah. That's what I do. Yes. You said that you're yeah. the only one that cuts the hair. I'm sorry, what's the relationship business-wise for the two of you? Gretna uh, has a background in human executive human resources, and so um, it's kind of twofold. She drives, and um, it gives me a chance to have a little bit of downtime between clients. And she also takes care of all of the PR um, and that type of thing for the business. She makes um, appointments and, and sets up presentations such as this. Um, she, we write articles. We were featured in Cova Biz Magazine. Um, so she, she handles all of that type of thing for me. And you have a question? Yes, so um, I was more of a suggestion. We have a couple of friends who work at Geico and they have, they will coordinate with food trucks or other businesses who do um, like they did like knocker ball type stuff like that mm -hmm. for their employees and they'll have certain things on certain days but I would try contacting them and see if you can come for like maybe the fifth day of every month and then they can come out because they're allowed to get certain break times for the food trucks when they're there and then they come out all day um, I know the food trucks will be there for all the shifts I think they one stays until 10 p.m. but otherwise they leave at like five but they're there all day we have a so direct a connection with Geico, oh, okay. um, and um, so there's a someone that goes to our church is okay. connected there, and unfortunately they won't allow oh, it to come because really? mm -hmm. yeah. we checked. We thought that would be a great idea as well. Um, we are looking at going. We went to Charles Barker where we purchased the the Mercedes, and we spent the day out there. It was one of my best days, and um, we're looking at partnering with them coming once a month um, and also getting into the other Charles Barker dealerships and they want to do some of their events that they sponsor with me. I'm going to do uh, work with their charities as well because I do do a lot of that um, charity work for people. I work do haircuts for Stand Up for Kids every third Tuesday of the month so I'll, I'm going to do that with Charles Barker and just kind of build that relationship and it's a win-win situation for both Mercedes, as you can see, a very different way to, for their vehicle as opposed to and, you know, advertising my business as well. Okay. Did you have a question? Yes. yes. Uh, you mentioned that you are working on a scheduling system. Uh, is it a custom system or are you going to find a uh, current? Like, because uh, 
I mean, there is a Vagaro app, I guess. I don't know if you ever heard of it. V A G A R O. That is a basically hairdresser or barber shop scheduling application. It's online, and you can just sign up to it. I don't know how it works, okay. but uh, I know a, sh uh, okay. a studio that uses it, a shop that uses it. So instead of getting a custom one, you can just join that and basically you schedule ahead of time mm -hmm. and then you know, you'll know your schedule is on your uh, phone and it will just show up there. Right. You okay. should be able to. Also, you know, every man has a certain uh, day of haircut, maybe like four or five weeks, mm -hmm. I guess. So you can schedule that in a way that every, you know, every month, certain days, you can be in one location. And if you post it on your advertisement or Facebook page and I think people will start showing up a lot more. We have some people that are actually beginning to have a set schedule for themselves. A lot of men, believe it or not, are, are sporadic and when they get their hair cut, primarily because again it's a chore to set up the time to go get a haircut. But with this they're finding they don't have to do that anymore. They can have their time. They know when I come to them they don't have to wait in line. So I have I am slowly having more and more clients that say especially on Fridays. At Friday at 10 o'clock, every two weeks, I want my hair cut. Um, I have one that's every other Friday at nine. I have, then I have a Friday at 10.30, I go do a haircut and shave, and that's every week. Some people every four weeks, some people every five. You have your different different time schedules that people like to get their hair cut. So that, that makes it easy on me, it makes it easy on the client. I, I send them a, just a reminder notice, you know, that tomorrow is your appointment, and so that's, that is the to work out like that as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have an end with uh, checkered flags, so check them out. Okay. Um, well, I'll just give you my info. My fiance works there. Okay. Right, um, thank you. Oh yeah. No also, I just think this is like the coolest concept ever because I'm like all about mobile everything, and this is just. I wish she kind of were a mobile salon, but you know, maybe next year. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> on the list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or Style Seat. Or sorry, the last thing. Have you guys heard of Style Seat? I know my salon uses that app. It's like I can book it, I can pay for it ahead of time. If I don't show up, they can charge me because that's happened before. <laughs> so, um, and then it kind of puts you out to, so Style Seat is kind of like a social media, but for like people who are looking for stylists and things in the area and barbers. And I know Chris's barber uses it too. I think it's like 30 bucks a month, so you might want to check that out. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes, sir? You were, when, did you, when did you first roll? November is when we had the, our grand opening, and that was no, November the 5th. And so where are you right now? November now, where are you in your growth rate? Steadily up, going up, um, truly. I, every week I have had new clients. Um, I've had families. I have had maybe one person, but it is, I am on a steady incline. The, at are this you? point, it's almost paying for itself and just in a, within a few months. Uh, yes. Well, yes. Well, yes. Yeah. There's not quite the profit line yet, but we're, well, we are we are really close to breaking even. Right. So. Yeah. How would you anticipate handling that? Here's the only great idea. Love the idea. Mm -hmm. The very practical is that you're one one nice van, one barber, mm -hmm. stylist, faithful driver, you know, <laughs> you're out there taking care of everything. When do you max? Because there's got to be a point where you can't be everywhere and you're driving. And I'm looking at you, every time you're driving, you've got lost time. That's right. From point A to point B. So what's your plan? You mentioned something about pods. What's your plan to handle that once you hit that point? Uh, part of the plan is to have specific places like Charles Barker, Checkered Flag, and um, certain nursing homes, not nursing home, retirement communities so that we know that on certain dates we will be there for half day, whole day, et cetera. So that would be the bulk of the business. We would still have the people who call us because they're, they are Donna's loyal clients. So we don't, <laughs> the question was, what if you get too busy for me? We're not gonna get too busy for anybody, but that is the plan so that, because when we're on the road, we're not cutting hair. Yeah. So the plan is for us to be in different spots, different days of the week, yeah. different weeks, so that we can build have that. Okay, well, I'm looking at the, down the road. Is, let's say, is this something you would look at like franchising or something like that? So, say you end up, you could uh, almost niche your market out. You mm -hmm. could say either a territory or you could say, I've got the van that deals with the retirement homes. And you develop a whole, you know, I'm going from uh, uh, a 
assisted living, retirement homes, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. get closer to that page myself. So the thing is, is uh, that you know, if you hit those, you know, Monday I'm here, Tuesday I'm here, and all that. Mm -hmm. Have you got any kind of? I'm looking at it as if someone's an investor. You right. Know, yes. Kind of thing, those kind of questions. And I have a client that is ready to invest when I when I'm when I'm ready to move to the next van because people absolutely are loving the concept. So that's it's an excellent point, excellent question. And we do have plans to put more units out there. Um, right now, we want to get this one above the line, of course, you know, and then move on. I'd like within the next two years at most to have another van. And it would be decided at that point or along the way, would it be another barber van? Would it be a salon? Would it be a nail salon? Awesome. Would it be, um, you know, would it be a massage therapist? So there are several different avenues that we're looking at having. Um, and do we want to have a corporation with some smaller business underneath? Yeah. You know, mine of course would be separate because no one else could have my name. But I would, we would, we would yeah, have. You're about like franchising or something. Franchising like or having employees. Um, at this point, this early in the game, our next step is to hire an attorney that could give us some direction from the business-wise which way we should handle either franchising or building a corporation. I'm going to sit for just a minute because my knees are weak still. <laughs> yes, sir. You were next, and then. I was just going to ask about rooting because you know if you had one client on the ocean front, then you're Lansdowne Common, and then you're you know Shore Drive, and then you're at Kemp, you know Kempsville somewhere. That's exactly the way you started all your out. Time. That's yeah. exactly the way we started you'll out. You'll never, you'll never. That's you're right. Not done in a day if you're driving more than you're cutting. That's right, and that that is exactly how we started out. Like Gretna said, we are much closer now to that potting, um, like like we as she mentioned where. That when people are calling me for appointments, I start setting them. If, if I have someone like, I'm working on Pungo down to Knott's Island as well because there is not one barber shop down in that whole entire area. So I do have some clients in Pungo. So I try to schedule everybody on that side of town if they call and I have a day that I don't have anybody set up, I put them on that day. Then when somebody calls in there at the oceanfront, I try to schedule everybody at the oceanfront that day. So that's how the scheduling is going at the moment. So um, it's just taking a little while to get that, but it's it's happening. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you how do you finance uh, your your cash flow? I mean, it, it, there it, it's obviously a large initial capital investment. Yes. And it takes a long time to to uh, pay that off. So mm -hmm. so how do you how do you finance it? Do you just just uh, but can you just do it at a bank or or do they? We have two sources or do you for have this particular in, thing. investors. I'm sorry. We have two sources for this particular venture. We have the, the bank for the vehicle, and then an investor to who has given us a loan for the upkeep for the upfit. Upfit. Yes. It costs more actually to upfit the van itself than it did to purchase the van. I can tell you that the van cost me more than my first house. Um, yes. So yeah, sure. um, yeah. we no expense was spared in, in creating the van. And I'd love to show it to you all um, after after we're finished, but that's how that's how we've gone about. Why didn't you uh, Why didn't you design it for both men and women? Because I number one, I am a barber. I'm not a cosmetologist, and most women want a shampoo. It does have a sh it does have a shampoo bowl in, but most women want a shampoo, a blow dry, a style, and it takes a long time. It takes a lot more time in, than for women than it does men. I cater to the guys. Again, because I am a barber, um, I don't do any type of chemical services such as hair color and things like that. Um, I do have some, a few women clients because I can do any haircut uh, for men or women, but I just cater to the guys. It's what I enjoy. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I was looking at the other <laughs> hands up. So what are your plans for the future? I mean, when you, um, as you look at the different venues and things out there, what's making money for you? What would be your goals? Would your goal to be to connect more with the Geico's and the, and the, the businesses that can, where you can park for a while? Would it, would it, could you make more money doing these groups like um, weddings? Or, or do you enjoy the, the individual? Um, I enjoy the individual because um, a lot of my clients from the, where the I was working at a barber shop down at the ocean front prior to opening this, and so a lot of them followed me. Um, so, but to make this the most profitable, obviously, places like Geico or other locations where I could go doing weddings, 
um, or other events where I could sit in one spot. Just like you mentioned, when I'm on the road driving, right. I'm not cutting, I'm not making, you know, I'm not making money, I'm spending money using, the van runs on diesel, so I'm, I'm spending money on gas, you know, and I've got the generator running usually, so I'm using propane. Um, so I, the, the more cuts I can do, or the more services I can do in one location, the better. <laughs> Um, let me, this gentleman and then you. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, one uh, idea was, like, why don't you use a bigger, like, a camper kind of design? Basically, like, campers, the inside is already half furnished. There's cabinets, there's a lot of things, and you just have to maybe take the beds out and, like, Winnebago, I guess, is the brand. I mean, like, mm -hmm. why don't you go with something like that or go with a smaller van? We wanted a clean slate, actually because this has not been done here, mm -hmm. and we wanted to be able to design it to the, the needs of Donna's specifications. Okay. So the counter heights and where, the, where things are placed are placed where she uses them. Okay. And so um, we have, you'll see that we do have two waiting chairs. Not that we typically have people waiting because we're going to a particular person's house or business. Sometimes we do with families, though. Yes, and, um, and we have a PlayStation so the kids can be you know, entertained in the meantime. But um, we did put chairs that have seat belts there because if we do have any people that we transport for any reason, like parents that we pick up at the airport, um, they can sit in the van. Okay. I mean, maybe for the next one, it will give you, even if you had a clean slate, you can ask for a you know, blank uh, you know, camper and then refurbish it your way. It will give you maybe two, three seats in that space if you the, want to go for more. You mean to add more barbers in one location? Correct. To put, or, or more waiting area. More waiting area or more barbers or more features? I, personally, I don't want another barber working with me because I have my style and my space and um, you know my clients and that kind of thing. So, And I didn't want to go really big. Cause another thing is, this this is 20, almost probably 23 feet long. So with a Winnebago, you, I, we have to turn around sometimes in tight places. So we ha do have to consider that. Yeah. Another thing is we wanted to kind of, uh, although that's a, a, a very nice vehicle, we did want to keep it on the upscale uh, with a luxury vehicle, which Mercedes Sprinter speaks that highly, you know. Um, but um, the, the space, mm -hmm. parking space, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that it would be the, probably the reason. But uh, inside, it would work out great. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Maybe I missed this morning, but have you thought about parking at a school with maybe after school with kids, you know, parents being picked up and uh, it, so that they can get their hair cut? I have two boys, so okay. I was trying to get them to a, you know, place to get their hair cut. It was a big scheduling event, whereas if somebody just was right at the school, I would walk out and walk them right in. I have not thought about that, so I noticed Gretchen was writing that down. The, one of the, the school activities that was for prom. Um, that's that's one of the things that I've been looking at trying to get some information out for the guys for prom. Maybe get a group of guys that are friends and they all get together and I take care of them. So. Yes, ma'am. Uh, three quick things. One, um, Strawberry Festival is in Pungo. We're going to be there. I was going to say, that's like <laughs> a fine spot. And also in Pungo, there's the new, we live down there, that area, but the Bee and the Biscuit is the yes. new breakfast place, but it is. Yes. All I mean, at least a 40 minute wait, what mm -hmm. a prime time to go get a haircut. I mean, if you're right there, mm -hmm. they have that big space right across the street, mm -hmm. they have parking, they might let you pull in. I don't know if they're gonna want commission off of it or not, but I mean, if I gotta sit there with my kids, I might as well get my hair cut if I'm a guy. Mm -hmm. Let mom watch them. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> third thing is like, you said 25 for a haircut. I don't know what it runs for barbers, but to get his hair buzz is like 15 or 20 bucks. And if this is like a luxury, you could probably up the prices some, especially if you're coming to me and I don't have to drive there and I don't have to leave. I mean, you're cutting, you're also calculating in the time it costs me to leave work to go do this when I can't do that. You could play with probably upping the price a little bit, especially since it's luxury. I mean, it's not like you're taking me out back and putting my chair in the grass. I mean, it's just, you know? I mean this is like, from what it looks like, it's a nice experience. You got a PlayStation. I mean, you could probably charge more than 25, I would think. So that Absolutely. might help with the driving in between locations, helping cut down the cost of the diesel and the propane. So that was something I would look at. I think it sounds, it sounds, yeah, luxury. It sounds would, super reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. wonder if that would be the good group if when you have three guys to, to justify the $25 rate. I don't know. Yeah. It's something to 
The only one I know, there was a barber shop. His friend loves barbers, so I'm going to give that packet right to him. But um, and he works at Geico, which is why I was suggesting that. But he, there was one at Lance. I don't know if it's there anymore. But you could go GHQ. In, yes, and you get like a beer, and you get to watch sports. So I don't know what their prices are, but I mean. They're really, I was going to say, they're very close to mine. Yeah, so I would go above that even because it's luxury and you come to me. So, I mean, but I would kind of maybe play with that. And you'll see, you'll hit a price point where people start dropping off and you kind of level back out. We did start on the low end and we realized that. Uh, and that's basically just a, a starting place. We wanted to stay a little above the standard barbershop. Where I was working down at the oceanfront, a haircut was seventeen dollars. Okay. Um, a straight razor shave was twenty four dollars, and I was the only one that did the straight razor shaves in the barber shop. So um, we did go above that. So I wanted to stay in line with the general price in other places just to get started, but that gives me a place to grow. Mm -hmm. um, people com tend to complain when you go up on on prices, but I think I started low enough that I'm in line with everybody else, so it's enticing. For people to come and then I have a place to grow. Did you have a question back, sir? Okay. Yes. Do you even do any product sales? Not that I'm a product guy, but there are product guys out there and if you're carrying some products around, maybe you can take a little extra off of product sales. I do have some products. I, I don't they're not on display. I do keep some that I, I'm very particular about the products that I like to use. I'm very much into hair health and um, but I'm not a product pusher at this point. Um, I've not seen a great need for having a display, and that would have to be, uh, there's really not a good way to have that without everything tumbling over as it's driving, you know. But um, some, I have a few clients that will say, can you pick me up such and such and deliver it on my next haircut or in between, that kind of thing. So I do make a little bit extra. Um, it's something I'm looking at, but just not a big need at the point. But it's certainly not out of the question. Uh, how are you advertising? Uh, besides driving around, we, uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Yelp, uh, and I have a website, and um, I've been in uh, Inside Business, I have been in Cova Biz Magazine, um, all of those have been, been I good. Would, I would recommend that she came up with a great idea, you know, it's an observation, she came up with the targeting families with bunch of kids, sons, you know, I have a bunch of sons, trying to scramble to get them together at any given time to get them out, especially if they're a little younger, where, you know, when you get them out, a young one's running around underneath everything getting into things. So if you had it at home, they're at home, you can just snatch them out for television or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's an idea. I, it may be something you may want to experiment with and try to do a, an actual campaign, and the person you would target is mom. Target mom, I would recommend, um, you know, there's different social media tools you can use, but if you're targeting mom, use Facebook. Because mm -hmm. that's where the demographic will lie, you know, between that 20 some, you know, 40 year bracket. Mm -hmm. So I would you do some campaigns. I think you could actually start doing campaigns and not even, I, I'm not talking about spending a thousand dollars on ads, don't get me wrong. I think there's some almost a lot of some organic stuff that you could do that would uh, really help you. You know, you could try it out. You could mm -hmm. experiment. I, I, I agree with them. I was thinking about, of course, my son's 12 now, but he used to play Little League, and I could couldn't you picture this thing pulling up to a Little League field? Oh, and Little League. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Boys, you know, right after the games. Who's got time to go get their hair cut? Waiting in between games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, a, that's a great. I don't know. Brother to get that. You know where that, you know where that field is <laughs> down there next to uh, Ocean Lakes? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Drive up there. Soccer games. Yeah, soccer games. Yeah, this is important. I was just, you mentioned one of your demographics being the military. Obviously, there's a lot of military in the uh, area. Uh, do you have access to the bases? Can you get on bases? Is there a solicitation or permit you need or anything? What we have been told is that we want to be near the bases, but not on the bases because they, uh, and forgive me for not knowing, remembering that, uh, what they're called. Um, the data exchanges will go after you. Yeah, like 40% of my profit. Yeah. Yeah. So they, have they do, and in my experience with um, with that, working in, a, in, the, in another barbershop and and even in my current one, you know, we would have calls and there are people to make appointments. 
I went to the exchange, can you fix this, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. <laughs> and so I really would like to get more, you know, have access to get near the bases. I can help you figure out a way to get on base, um, maybe through MWR morale. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yeah, as long as you can make it convince them and they get their percentage cut, yeah. you're another vendor. Yeah. But you're going into a very, you're right into the heart where they generate a lot of money on barbershops. Yeah. They do, and they're, they're more about, uh, you know, quantity instead yes. of quality. Yeah, quality. And, and a lot of the, a, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of our not a service whole lot people are in the military here. No. That, <laughs> yes. But, you know, I, and I have gotten Gretna watching the haircuts, and they are my pet peeves especially those that wear really tight, you know, those real tight fades, and there's a line all over on their head that is just a pet peeve of mine, and so it's just like, if I could just get my get near the bay, because that would be huge, you know, that, that would be a, yeah, be a and I do offer a military discount. That's so the largest base in the world. Yeah, yes. Yeah, well, oh, shit, yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. So, um, I'm looking at it from a marketing standpoint, because I do, well, that's what I do for a living. But you guys are a huge draw for my clients, um, a lot of my clients who have storefronts, like even Checkered Flag, because uh, we just had a conversation yesterday about how to get more people onto the lot. Mm -hmm. What are their lots? You guys, honestly, you're in a unique situation. It could be that people actually pay you to come out to their events mm -hmm. just to generate the foot traffic in. You know, instead of you going to a vendor show and you paying $500, if it were me, I'd probably pay you $500 to show up. Or work out some kind of <laughs> deal <laughs> like that. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it just it just dawned in my mind that you guys yes. would generate a ton of foot traffic for anybody that needs foot traffic. So you guys are actually a marketing tool for another company. The second thing is, I don't know if you guys remember Twisted Sister, Twisted Sisters back mm -hmm. when they were just a cupcake truck. I don't know if this uh -huh. is like legal uh -huh. for you guys. I used to follow them. Because like on, it was like really sad, but on Facebook they would post like, oh, we're gonna be in the corner of like Kellum and whatever, and I would like hightail it over there, you know. So they would just put it out right before, oh, we're gonna be in this area, we're gonna be in this area. And honestly, for Facebook ads, you could probably for twenty bucks you could target a thousand to two thousand people if you uh, set the demographics right. I've not used those Facebook ads yet, and I've wondered how well they work. They, awesome. I just love them. Yeah. They're pretty cool. They they do all right. There you go. If you like, you like 18 to 72, you probably don't get a lot. The only advice we tell you about Facebook ads, you really watch your demographic. Yes. Mm -hmm. It does not help you if you have 10,000 likes in California. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Although, we got a phone call from California day before yesterday because the, the, the brother-in-law lives here. And I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> That's how they justify charging you the uh, yeah. other race because they might know somebody. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Got it. The, uh, the thing is that uh, be very careful about that. Mm -hmm. Be very careful. But you can, I, I think you should. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I do like the, you know, we can talk about flying on that, that kind of stuff. Is that if you do the demographics right, target the right office, you can do it also an A B test yep. where you can target the men, target the women. The first thing is to go to the 100 and some plus likes you already have and see how the demographics are breaking down. Who's following you okay. already? And that's again, I noticed your last post was in March, and so you know, you need a little bit more stuff there, but. Yeah, we can talk offline. Well, no, one of the other things we have we're looking at is the uh, Virginia Beach Hotel Association. Yes. Because um, you know during the summertime, having experience working down the oceanfront, it just blows my mind the number of people that go on vacation and get a haircut. I mean, who would think of that? But they do, and and then the guys getting a straight razor shave is a treat. So they have monthly mixers, and I would get to meet the general managers, and hopefully then I could pull, I could pull right up to the hotel. So that's another. Following the her line, how many? A very good day for you. Is how many cuts? I will tell you, my goal yeah. is to get to twenty a day. A so good day talking, for me right now is about. So you're talking five hundred dollars without tips. I'm sorry. You're talking five hundred dollars without tips. Very good. Day. That's correct. A very good day. Mm -hmm. You could probably live with a little less, which you are, mm -hmm. but you want to get up to that. So that's right. Following, I would chat with her because if they can do a, if a company's willing to say. You be out here all day, you say blank price, maybe I give you because of your recurrent dealership, mm -hmm. and they advertise the day, they just pay you right up front, and then they advertise free haircuts. Mm -hmm. 
to bring yep. traffic in, just free haircuts, bring, you know, again, that's an interesting problem. That's what I've been trying to think, I've been thinking the same thing for marketing. It's like value added, you know, when you yeah. go to um, stations and they'll bring out a, you know, they bring people out or whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like my friend uh, Dan Ryan, I mean, I just so, totally see that as, you know, he's a, Oh, the store, like could, the store? Could, could yeah, but that could, would be so awesome. But could can they get past Nesbaum with that? And would they have an issue with it? Or if, if Dan invites them out to just park over there somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Typically, they give them two yeah. events a year. Like most of those bigger shopping centers will give their tickets. We I actually just went through this yesterday okay. with Renaissance Shopping Center. Yeah. They give them two events a year that they can do that are. They're allowed to bring in like the tents. Yeah, the tents and the giant like bounce that. house. Well, because she's a car, if he owns a certain number of spots, he can probably, I mean, he'd have to look at his agreement. He probably just use his spots. Yeah, not true. Not call it an yeah. event, but it's a service he's offering. Maybe like if you had like, you know, a coffee yeah. cart in the bar. But I was going to say with Facebook, we do a lot of Facebook advertising, but you have a lot of Facebook followers. I mean, the advertising, the pay artist advertising is great, but I mean, you could use the, you know, heck for a better word, out of that. When you pull in somewhere, hop on Facebook Live, and be like, we're here, here we are, we're going to be here for the next hour. If you show up, we'll stay. And then when you leave, we are leaving and we are heading towards, because they're going to get all those notifications. If I'm on lunch and I don't want to go get food, and I'm like, oh, well, you're right there, I'm going to get my hair cut now. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get those people that are like last minute, it's a or idea. like if you have like Valentine's Day is coming up, mm -hmm. you know, two weeks out. Valentine's Day is coming up. This is where we're gonna be. Come get your beard shaved and your head, and come get all pretty <laughs> for your date. Don't go on your date looking like you just show a picture of a disgusting beard. You know, yeah, we've got yeah. beards are in right them. now, and the guys yeah. need to look good for their mom. Father's <laughs> Day, <laughs> that's right. You can run like a Father's Day special, True. like get this for right. your dad. Facebook without having to pay also if you've got a big following. Right um, now it's about 182 really or so likes so since November. So. Okay. You could probably so trade guys, out radio what advertisement too. What would you guys suggest? You could probably trade out ra radio some. advertisement. Market. Like you can trade with the radio mm -hmm. station. Facebook. Like you do X amount of cuts, they give you X amount of commercials. Okay. I mean that's what I would do because I don't like paying for stuff. So. Do you have recommendations, Matt? What you should uh, do to get drama awesome, more? But oh. anyways, yeah, <laughs> so um, the, what he was saying with the Facebook ads, I've used them quite a bit too, and the demographics.